Hi, here I made this device to demonstrate the force between two current carrying conductors. So these are the two conductors. Um, so the device is made of uh, this power supply. We have four batteries, uh, each of them 3.3 volts. So totally we have 6.6 uh, .6 volts. These batteries, they have very high short circuit current, uh, each 120 amps. So totally we will have 240 amps short circuit current. But obviously the current that flows through this circuit will not be 240 amps because we have some extra resistance of these wires and the switch. Actually, I've already measured it. It's 21 milliohm, um, the resistance of total wires and the switch. Switch is 2 milliohm, the rest wires is 19 milliohm. Now, the connection is basically, it starts from the uh, battery, goes to the switch, and then goes up here. It comes to one of these wires, it goes to the other side, and then we have a short circuit here. It comes back and goes back to the battery. So basically, you will have something like this. So from the battery goes to the one wire, then there is a short circuit at the end, comes back, goes to the switch. So when we turn on the switch, basically current will flow in one direction in one of the conductor and in opposite direction in the other conductor. Now I can reconfigure this device basically using this wire that I put here. Um, I can connect, open these connections and reconfigure it to have basically current flowing in one direction in both conductors. So I can connect battery in one side and then switch on the other side. So in this case, current flows in one direction. All right, so we can see that if I try to switch it on, of course, these wires will go away from each other. Now, it's very simple to demonstrate the direction of the force in this case, because we have one current going to the left side and one other current going, going to the right side. So we will see how to calculate the direction of the force. So in this case, it's very simple. Take that wire. So what we have to do is to first find the direction of magnetic field. So you can use a right hand rule to find the direction of magnetic field. You put your thumb in the direction of current. Let's say current flows this way to the left. And when you close your hand, that will be the direction of magnetic field. Now you have to identify at which point you want to calculate the magnetic field. So if you want to find the direction of magnetic field here, the direction would be toward that side. If you want to find it here, the direction will be downward. But the place that is interesting for us is the plane in between these two wires. So we want to find the direction of magnetic field there. So actually we want to find it here. In this case, we see that when I close my hand, so the direction of magnetic field will be upward. So that wire, when the current flows that side, it produces a magnetic field upward. Okay, now you focus on the second wire, this wire. So we have a background magnetic field produced by this first wire. Okay, so we have an upward magnetic field. And this wire, of course, carrying a, a current. Current flows through it. So we want to find the direction of force. So you put four finger in the direction of current, because in this case, the current goes that way. Okay, in such a way that when you close your hand, it should be in line with the magnetic field. We have calculated the magnetic field is upward, so okay, so I have to put my forefinger in this direction. When I close it, that will be the direction of magnetic field. In this situation, my thumb shows the direction of force, so the force will be outward. Now, if the magnetic field, for example, was toward that side, then you, you had to hold your hand like this, and in that case, the direction of force will be upward. But in this case, the magnetic field is upward, you have to do it like this, so the force will be outward. And the same procedure you can repeat for the other wire, and then you see that the force will be toward that side. So that's why these wires will separate in this configuration. Now, if I rearrange this setup and make it such that the current flows in the same direction for both of them, let's say in the, from right to the left. Okay, so we do the same procedure. The magnetic field is upward. In this case, I have to put my hand in the direction of current because now it will be that side. When I close it, direction of magnetic field, my thumb shows the direction of force. So we see that the force will be inward. So if the current flows in one direction, then the force will be inward. The, if the current flows in the opposite direction, the force will be outward. As we can see here. All right, let me rearrange this to show you the inward force. Okay, so I have rearranged this uh, configuration. I put these uh, spacers. 
to keep a bit of uh, distance between the two wires. In this configuration, the current flows in one direction in both of the conductors. So as you can see, when I turn on the switch, the wires attract each other. All right, so now I'm going to measure the current using this current meter. Um, in this configuration, because these two wires are in parallel, so the total resistance of this setup is a little bit less. Uh, of course, I have added this extra wire, which added to the total resistance, but in total, right now we have approximately 15 milli ohm. Okay, so let's see. All right, so you saw that momentarily the current even uh, increased to 348 amps. So this suggests that uh, these batteries, even though in the data sheet it states that they can deliver 120 amps for 10 seconds, probably momentarily they can even deliver more, maybe 160 amps, 170 amps, or even more. Okay, so we can also calculate the force between these two conductors using this famous formula, force per unit length is mu zero I1, I2 divided by two pi R. So R here, let's say is approximately five centimeters and the current is totally, let's say 300 amps. So each of them get 150 amps. So if you put this in inside the formula, force per unit length, it becomes 0 0.09 Newton. It's roughly maybe equivalent to 10 grams weight. Of course, these two wires doesn't need too much force to come closer. But as these wires come closer, the distance becomes less, and so the force increases. So let's say if the distance is half a centimeter, then the force will be 10 times more, nearly equivalent to 100 grams weight when they are half a centimeter apart. All right, so that's all for this video. Bye.